We are going to start the press conference by Minister Motegi. If you are designated, please come to the nearest stand and please identify yourself and uh, your affiliation. Watanabe san, please. NHK NHK Watanabe is my name. I think you had a meeting directly uh, with uh, Mr. Began, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State. Uh, starting this uh, meeting as a using this start uh, this meeting as starting point going forward, perhaps you will be able to have an in-person diplomacy. How are you going to reopen, resume, and expand in-person diplomacy going forward? Yeah, during this uh, morning, I met with. Uh, Deputy Secretary of State Began, who had uh, paid me the courtesy call, and after the threat of coronavirus, with the foreign ministers of other countries, nearly 60 countries of them, I had a TV or telephone conferencing so far. And each of the exchange were useful, and today it was done in person. I thought the in-person meeting is much better. Of course, uh, originally it was uh, scheduled to last for 20 minutes, initially for the courtesy call, but uh, it turned out to be about one hour. And we were able to have uh, quite an in-depth discussion. As for the substances, I hope you can look at the readout. Diplomatic activities done in person was very significant. That is the impression I got. Kato-san, please. Nikkei Kato is my name. I have a follow-up question. This time, uh, you have taken the measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 for this meeting. Maybe this is going to be the basis going forward. Therefore, in the future, Japanese high-ranking officials may uh, go abroad to have such a meeting? Yes, uh, it is true that for Japan, Deputy Secretary Vegan's visit to Japan took place after the outbreak of the new coronavirus, and special measures were taken to minimize the infection risk. And uh, Mr. Vegan's case was the very first case for Japan to receive important person's visit. Looking at the situation in Europe and the United States, recently already in this uh, form, the exchanges and the travel of uh, important persons in this manner is becoming more general. It has been done quite frequently, that's my understanding. What is the practice of uh, Europe and the United States prior to leaving the country? PCR tests are conducted. Private jets are used with a small number of people for transport. Stay is being very short, and the limit is placed on the number of places to visit, meetings as well as accommodations, and not using the public transport and uh, as much as possible avoiding contact with the general public. It was applied to the case of uh, Mr. Began as well. All these measures have been taken, and upon returning to one's own country, once again, PCR tests will be conducted, and the health monitoring will continue. Special measures will continue. So as soon as uh, one would arrive at the country of destination, of course, uh, one must certify the negative results for the PCR test. Then, as soon as possible, public duty can begin. And after returning to one's own country, a PCR test will be conducted to check the negative results. Then the person can immediately go back to his or her official duty. That has been the kind of uh, general practices which have come to be in existence. These kind of exchanges and trouble of important persons uh, will not uh, happen every day. It doesn't uh, amount to 250 people every day, and uh, it does not accompany a large number of people. So this is a different framework than the usual border measures which are being taken. And it involves a public official duty of the important persons visiting foreign countries. So this is a way that we should consider. Next question, please. Nishimura-san. 
uh, public radio, Radio France, uh, in France, Nishimura is my name. By the end of this week, European Parliament will be adopting a resolution regarding the uh, removal of children by Japanese parent. And this resolution has been adopted already. What is your view, the government of Japan's view? This is quite serious. The uh, Japan's image abroad is getting worse because of this. So in concrete terms, what kind of actions are you contemplating to take? Uh, I know that uh, resolution has been adopted. And having said that, there are cases which are covered under Hague Convention, and there are cases which are not covered by Hague Convention, and the distinction has to be made. So for the uh, Japanese domestic cases which are not covered by the Hague Convention, it is the same with other countries that the Japanese government will base itself on the domestic legislation and you will be treated by fair and equitable manner without making distinction based on the nationality. If the cases are covered under the Hague Convention, then based on that said convention, uh, through the cooperation with the central authorities of EU member countries, through uh, consistently, appropriately, the cases have been dealt with. So the point that has been there that uh, Japan is not complying with the international law, but uh, this uh, resolution is not true. Next question, Watanabe-san. Once again, NHK Watanabe, the COVID-19 border measures is something I would like to ask you more about. The other day, with Vietnam, a special framework has been established. So Japanese people have already visited Vietnam based on this. And However, we haven't seen any Vietnamese coming over to Japan since the uh, framework establishment. What is the current status of exchange of uh, people between Vietnam and Japan? And also, status of negotiation with Thailand, also uh, other neighboring countries, Taiwan, Korea, and China. These countries for the exchange of people, uh, relaxation of immigration uh, measures. What is the current status of coordination and adjustment? Well, first of all, as for the uh, resuming the uh, travel, it will be done by phase. For the region, the uh, areas uh, where the infection has been put under control will be the first country, and there should be a, a need for the business uh, trouble to be followed by the foreign students as well as uh, in the final analysis you will also cover the general public uh, for the tourist purposes and so forth under this uh, policy uh, first of all we thought that the measures will cover vietnam thailand australia new zealand so those are the first batch of countries we would begin the negotiation and just the other day, from Japan to Vietnam, already the business persons have already gone to Vietnam, particularly for Vietnam and the Thailand, consultation is going on. That is the current status. So concretely, for the people-to-people uh, -people trouble, there are needs for making such a trouble. So from when the business persons would come from where to Japan is something we cannot say, but uh, to a considerable extent with Vietnam and Thailand, much progress has been made in the consultation. As you may know, with Australia and New Zealand, just recently a little bit uh, new infection cases have been observed, and also for Australia and New Zealand, uh, between those two countries, they are watching uh, how they are opening up their borders to them. So we will uh, see the development and make uh, necessary coordinations. And as I have been saying to you for a while, so the country is covered under these measures. We hope to widen the uh, covered countries. So which country will be covered under these uh, measures? That will depend on uh, how much uh, control has been placed uh, under the infection. And also inclusive of uh, businesses, uh, how much needs are there for reopening the business trouble. And those countries will be the priority country. So what would happen uh, during the first part of next week? This is not something that we cannot say, but uh, we hope that uh, 
we won't take too much time in deciding the second batch of countries. Follow-up question. In terms of the second group of destinations or countries, so a bunch of countries, a collection of countries, are you going to make an announcement regarding the many countries in the second batch? Or yesterday in Tokyo, we had many daily cases surpassing 220. So the situation on the part of Japan is also will be affecting the uh, difficulty in negotiations. I told you about the second batch. Would it be comprised of one country or one region? It wouldn't happen like that in Japanese uh, expression. So more than 200 people, 220 people infected cases have been found in Tokyo yesterday. Is this a large number or a small number? How much alert we should be? This is not something that I should say anything about from my position, but uh, as I look at the current situation of Japan, I think uh, the uh, situation are under control. That is the uh, general understanding by the overseas countries about Japan, and uh, this uh, remains to be unchanged. Other questions? Yes, please. IWG Tsuchiura is my name. I have a question regarding Hong Kong national security law. Because of the enactment of this legislation, the Japanese nationals living in Hong Kong or Japanese businesses and media working in Hong Kong, their activity and freedom will be affected. What is your view? Safety and activity freedom is guaranteed. What is your view on this? Another point, another question. And please ref uh, defer your question, the next question. Yes, uh, with regard to Hong Kong, you can just return to your seat for a while. Thank you. With regard to Hong Kong, uh, this is a country with which we have a close economic relations and uh, uh, significant exchanges of uh, people under one country, two system. We are of the view that uh, they should maintain the free and open system and uh, develop uh, democratically and stably, which is important. That is a consistent view. At this time, with regard to the national security law, there has uh, no case uh, or the damages reported uh, from uh, Japanese companies and the Japanese people living in Hong Kong. And there are about 26,000 Japanese people living in Hong Kong, 1,400 Japanese companies operating in Hong Kong. The future of one country, two system is very important for Japan because uh, we have a close economic relationship uh, as well as a uh, person-to-person exchange with Hong Kong. So from this viewpoint, uh, we would watch over closely the implications of uh, said legislation going forward. And uh, we really hope that the respect and the protection will be given to the activities and the rights of uh, Japanese companies and Japanese people in Hong Kong. And we hope to ask the same to the Chinese government. Thank you very much for your response. I have a related question. Uh, President Xi Jinping of China, uh, his visit to Japan as a state guest, and there is a request uh, calling for cancellation of his visit. So going forward, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, China, what do you think how the Sino-Japanese diplomatic relations will evolve? This is the same the responses that I have given to you before. Many times over. Any other questions? Thank you. This concludes the press conference.